Okay, welcome back and another video in the series about the Cloud Resume Challenge. In the last video, we basically set up the Route 53 uh, pointing to our CloudFront distribution and we were getting that 403 error. So as part of this video and the next video, we're going to resolve those errors and we're going to do that by creating ACM, which is our HTTPS certificate. We're going to apply that to our CloudFront distribution and then we're going to allow our custom domain access to the CloudFront distribution so that we resolve that 403 issue. So as part of this video, what we'll do is the first part of that, which is creating our certificate using ACM, and then we'll attach that to the CloudFront distribution. And so that's pretty much all we'll go through for today. Okay, so in this video, what we'll be doing is the next step in the Cloud Resume Challenge, and we're looking at the HTTPS and DNS portion. So if you remember the last video, what we did is we were trying to associate our domain name with our CloudFront distribution, we were getting this 403 error. So in this video, we're going to do part of the resolution for that. And part of that is setting up an SSL certificate and also aliasing our domain name to our CloudFront distribution. So if we just do a quick recap on what we've got so far. So we've got this S3 URL, which is the URL that's given to us by S3, which returns our content. We've also got this CloudFront one. And what we're actually trying to do now is actually set up a custom domain name. And this is my actual custom domain name that I want to set up to forward through to my CloudFront distribution. And that's what we're going to try and set up throughout this video. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we actually need to set up an SSL or a certificate, which we can do with AWS ACM, which is uh, the Amazon certificate manager. Now, I won't show you me actually creating this because it takes quite a while sometimes, but I've already created that and I'll just run you through how that works. So what we've got here is a resource. We've got a certificate that's created and it's saying it's valid for this uh, domain name. So this is my custom domain name and I'm creating a custom certificate that is valid for that particular domain name. If I go in here and look at my ACM console, what you should see is under here, I have this portion about validation. So when you first create this resource, it actually says pending rather than issued. And that's because it's waiting for you to validate that you are actually the owner of that domain name. And you can do this a number of different ways. Uh, I chose to do that through a DNS configuration, which means I'm going to create a DNS entry that validates that I actually own this domain name. So the way that works is you can see here, and this this little button here, create record and route 53 is already, it's grayed out and it's grayed out because I've already clicked it. Um, so when I created this resource, it set up here, it said pending for status and down here, this button was available to me and I went ahead and clicked that. What that actually does is takes this record here and adds this CDAME entry and points it towards this value. So the way that AWS is going to validate that you own this particular domain is it's asking you to add this entry, which is basically like a small hash, a bunch of random characters. Uh, which would exist within that uh, domain name that you said that you owned and you're going to return a certain value. So basically AWS is going to hit this URL and hope that it gets this response. So when I've hit create there, what that does is if I go back into Ruby 53, it actually creates me an entry. So that's the same entry here. See, we've got this hash C name to this value. Now, if I go ahead and I can even run a dig command on that, which I've already done here, so I can take this entry here and I can say clear that and I say dig this and what that means is when I make a request to that URL I'm going to see a CNAME response that goes to this value that tells AWS that I own that uh, domain name and that I can valid to set up a certificate for it so if I go back into ACM that eventually will then say issues sometimes it can take up to sort of half an hour or even a couple of hours which is why I say that I didn't uh, show you that just now and that actually creates our certificate so once you've gone ahead and got that created, what you also then need to do is then attach it to your CloudFront distribution. So I'll show you how I've done that. So in my, just in my template file, in my infrastructure as code file, I have in here, uh, in fact, let me show you just here actually. So this is my resource for my certificate, which I've just created. So that's the custom domain, sorry, that's the custom property in my infrastructure as code. I'm saying I want to create a certificate. And I want this to apply for this domain and I want to validate using the DNS method that we just talked about. Then once I've done that, what I will do is then I will also associate that certificate with my CloudFront distribution. So over here in my other template, I've got my CloudFront distribution. Let me just make that slightly bigger as well. And what I'm doing is within the distribution config, I'm saying I want to attach a viewer certificate that is associated with the certificate I just made. So that's the, so this, that is the certificate I made. And this is the association with my CloudFront distribution and just adding that the SSL support method is SNI only. 
And that should be all you need to attach that certificate to that CloudFront distribution. And the only other additional piece that we need to do now is also to add in an alias for our cloud formation as well. But I'll do that in the next video and show you how that works. Okay, so now that should be set up and we have our ACM certificate created and attached to the CloudFront distribution. However, that's not necessarily still going to get rid of that 403 error that we had because we also need to allow our custom domain access to that CloudFront distribution. But what we're gonna do is we'll cover that in the next video uh, and we'll then resolve that 403 error and get pretty much all of our front end working.